Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this worship service for January 31st, last day of January at Trinity United Church. And we welcome you, whether you're joining us from Capriol or farther afield. You might have noticed that that prelude was fairly sober, and we recognize that in our service today, we'll be talking about a scripture that is based on healing. And we've just come to the end of a week where we're focusing a bit on mental health. And so some of the words of that hymn, and you can probably go back and listen to it again, speak to the place of safety that we hope our churches and our communities are, and the healing balm that our God offers us. I invite you to a Zoom coffee time today at one o'clock and the link is in your email. There is a really good event coming up. As you know, this last year has shown in the media, we've seen a great increase in events of hatred and racism. This week marked the fourth anniversary of the shooting at the Quebec mosque. So there's a, an event that's hosted by the Manitou Intentional Learning Community, and it's on hate, racism, and Islamophobia, Wednesday at 7 by Zoom, and the link is in your email. The email also has um, the biography of the speaker, and this is a combined um, ecumenical effort between the Manitou Intentional Learning Community and also the Anglican Church, Church of the Epiphany. So. Um, you may spread that information with people that you know who may be interested. We had our first um, hymn sing by Zoom last night or Thursday on Thursday, Thursday night. And uh, there'll be another one next week. So let me know what your hymn suggestions are. And uh, there will be a link in your email for that as well. Bible study starts on February 24th and there's one book left. So contact me if you're interested. So Today, your annual report is ready. It's in your email. People who get services delivered are going to have a paper copy of the annual report. And we'll also have a few extra paper copies that will be in the church when we return here. It's 26 pages long. You're not going to want to print it out, but I encourage you to read it and celebrate what this year has been despite all of the restrictions. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. We ring the singing bowl the first time to remind ourselves that God is a God who cares. We have all been through stressful times, suffered losses, worried about friends, ourselves and our world. We long for the healing power of God to be manifest in our lives. We ring the singing bowl the second time to remind ourselves that God is a God of celebration. However different they have been, we have celebrated a birthday, an anniversary, a wonderful surprise, a life. We make this bowl ring with our gratitude, joy, and praise. As we light the Christ candle, we symbolically bring Jesus into our midst. Jesus is our hope, our peace, our joy, and our comfort. Let this candle be a symbol of our willingness to go wherever we are called by you. God, to serve justice, to share the good news, to seek just and right relationships, and to be yours, heart mind and soul. The acknowledgement of territory. Long before those of us who are settlers and those who are descendants of settlers came to this land, there were people here. Many nations of people lived and still live on the land we call Canada. 
given responsibility by the creator to be stewards of this land and all that lives on it. We know these people as indigenous. Today, as we remember what it means to love our neighbors, let us give thanks for the indigenous peoples of this land and let us remember that we worship God on the historic territory of the Wanapate First Nation. As Christ's people, let us be people of love, of truth, and of reconciliation. Please join us in our call to worship. The world blares out bigger, stronger, greater. And we wonder why we feel smaller, weaker, less. We look around at others and notice newer, smarter, more together. We look inside ourselves and fear we are not enough. We come today seeking God's presence. Seeking to be reminded that throughout every struggle, God is with us. God knows us with all our failings. And yet God loves us with care and compassion. God holds us close. We trust and encouragement. With trust and encouragement, God calls us as capable servants. Ah, love that. Love that hymn. Uh, I love that these uh, words carry us in to worship uh, and they create a space for us and for our spirit to grow. And that's lovely. Uh, please join us in the prayer of confession. God of all people, you call our name. And we don't listen. You call our name. And we run in the opposite direction. You call our name. 
and we are afraid that we will be asked to change our plans. You call our name. Call us again, gracious God. Push and pull us out of our complacency. Open our hearts to know your way. Make us bold, make us strong, make us yours. Call our name once again, O oh God. Amen. So our words of assurance. Uh, in the, the deep of night, God calls to us. In the brightness of day, God calls to us. God is there in our heads and in our hearts, loving us and waiting for us to receive the call. We receive God's call boldly, trusting in God's strength. Thanks be to God. It's time for gratitude, thanksgiving, and mission. So I have a couple of things for which I am really grateful this week. First of all, I mentioned that you are getting your annual report, and I would like to thank all the people who submitted items for the annual report and who worked hard to prepare the financial statements for the report, and also the people who participated in the activities that got written up in that report. Another thing for which we should be very grateful is the way that ordinary people in our town have stepped up to support Bread and Roses Food Bank. And one of the volunteers at the food bank said that last week when the food bank was running, two people came by on the street and they handed in a donation of money to the food bank saying, you never know when it could be me that needs that help. So that's a source of gratitude. I also want to celebrate connections that are being made. And I mentioned at the beginning that people are watching this service from as far away as British Columbia. I know there are people in Stratford, Waterdown, Sault Ste. Marie, and I'm not sure where, Espanola, I'm not sure where else. And we also had people joining us at our hymn sing from Lively and from Grace United Church. And so it's just, it's wonderful that the connections are being made. Not long ago, churches were encouraged to get out be beyond their walls. And I hate to say thanks to the pandemic for doing this, but in a way, um, we are free to worship at each other's churches without physically transporting ourselves there. So for those of you who have found connections beyond your own community, I give thanks. And for those of you who are joining us from wherever we don't even know, thank you for being here with us. This week, instead of a minute for mission, I bring you a minute for right relations. So the Canadian Shield Regional Council has a right relations group. They've written um, about every month or so, they write a minute for mission for us. 
And this one is about intergenerational tra trauma or transgenerational trauma. And so you already know that many children, 150,000 is, is an estimate, Indigenous children were taken from their families and their communities, and they were deprived for many years of their culture and language. On the surface, it was said that this was to educate and prepare for their preparation in Canadian society, but there's a much more sinister story behind it. And we share some of that blame because the federal government and churches, including our church, the Catholic Church and the Anglican churches, were the people who administered those schools. And international and national authorities have actually declared that as an act of cultural genocide. We were really trying to wipe out a population and a culture. In addition, the Canadian government initiated what is known as the 60s scoop. And this was in the 1960s, so many of us were alive at that time, the mass removal of indigenous children from their families and into the child welfare system, mostly without consent of their families or their band. It's estimated that maybe 20,000 Indigenous children were apprehended and then fostered and adopted to primarily non-Indigenous families. When I was teaching, I had a student in my class who always thought that she was French Canadian. And only when she got to um, the final years of high school and on into university did she realize she had a Native background. And she started working on it and researching it. And she's now become a health professional who tries to combine First Nations healing methods with uh, Western healing methods. There are a lot of people who are like that, who grew up completely unaware of their heritage. I'm going to share you something from Richard Wagamese. His book is called One Story, One Song. And this is what he says. I am not a victim of Canada's residential school system I never attended a residential school, so I can't say I'm a survivor. However, my parents and my extended family members did. The pain they endured became my pain. Abandoned in the winter of 1958, he and his three siblings were found and they were put into the child welfare system. He was adopted at age nine, but eventually left home at 16 to live on the streets where he battled addiction and he didn't see his family again for 21 years. In this book, he set, reflects on his journey to wellness, offering his gratitude for the gifts of his First Nations customs, language, culture, community, and land that renewed his sense of belonging. The loss of culture, community, and language, and the impacts of the residential school experience and the 60s scoop are intergenerational. Reconciliation, which we have been encouraged to do and live, live out. Reconciliation includes recognizing and understanding the effects of intergenerational trauma on Indigenous children and on their communities and looking at ways to support the health and well-being of Indigenous children and families. So we're encouraged to inform ourselves and learning some of these terms and some of these stories is one of the ways that we can inform ourselves. We can hold back on our comments when something about Indigenous relations comes up in the news and online. And we can participate in things like Have a Heart Day. So it's created by the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society of Canada. And you're going to hear more about that in the future. And now, with glad and generous hearts, we bring our gifts and our offerings before you, and we say together our prayer of dedication. Holy Provider, here is the work of our hands. Here is the love of our hearts. Here is our desire to make a better world. Bless our offering and send your spirit upon it so that our gifts may join the gifts of all your church to help your kingdom come. Amen.
scripture reading today is from the New International Version, and it is Mark 1, verses 21 to 28. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. They went to Campanon, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in, um, okay. Just then, a man in their synagogue, synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. A spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Help us to be still and to quiet. Help us to lean in, to hear your word. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. Amen. So this week, we as church have received the annual report. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure that um, a few people who heard when Faye mentioned it uh, that it was out, uh, and me right now saying it, um, your eyes are glazing over a little bit. Uh, that can happen. But for me, I'm a really big fan of the annual report. And this year, being my first year as a student minister, um, it gives me great honor to hold up what God has been doing in uh, in this place. And also, uh, what's going on with God and uh, what is working in us and others by the Spirit? Does that sound familiar? We believe in God who works in us and others by the Spirit. If you guessed it, it's from the United Church Creed. The Creed is our collective statement of our faith and we sing it, we say it, we proclaim it often, as we did this morning. Additionally, at Trinity specifically, we have a mission statement. Our mission statement, you'll find printed on the front cover of your annual report. And it states, we are called to love one another as a redeemed people coming to serve God's creation sharing our faith and talents, and living and growing in the spirit of Jesus. Now, I want you to remember back to when you could go to the movies. Yeah, I know it seems like forever ago. Uh, do you remember uh, all of the movie trailers that are shown at the beginning of the movies, which seem to go on forever? Um, they're meant to intrigue us and encourage us to come back to see the live feature film another time. That said, 
the recent video that was shared in your weekly email is meant for the same reason. The Celebrating Trinity 2020 movie trailer holds the very words of our mission of this church. Our mission statement is a way that we strategize to live out our goals. In the season of the annual reports and years end, we also vision and dream of what's next for Trinity. This morning, we are going to zero in a bit on some specific words of Trinity's mission statement. We'll look at the focus of being redeemed people, as well as living and growing in the spirit of Jesus. I want us to hold there for a moment as we leave a bit of room for some quick history on the book of Mark. Firstly, according to P.C. Ennis, Mark, more than any other gospel writer, emphasizes Jesus' miraculous power to heal and to exercise, as in exorcism. One of the 18 miracles recorded in Mark, 13 of them have to do with healing, and four of them, 13, are exorcisms. So yes, I said it, exorcisms. I was reading some commentaries of preachers who write about this passage in Mark that we heard today, and I laugh because some preachers would uh, simply say, yeah, nope, uh, not touching this scripture. Um, I think I'll preach on the Psalms. The bottom line, folks who don't want to preach about exorcisms, um, it's because it's not what we're used to hearing. And I debated it myself. It, it sounds hocus pocus. Well, here we are, and it looks like we're going to talk about it. Uh, perhaps what challenged my initial thoughts about the business of exorcism was the Merriam-Webster Dictionary's definition stating that exorcism means to expel uh, an evil spirit by adjuration, or in other words, in earnest urging, or exorcism means to get rid of something troublesome, menacing, or oppressive. Now, discovering this uh, had me thinking that I could get my head wrapped around the word exorcism better because I can relate to things that are troublesome, menacing, or oppressive. And better yet, that I'd want to get rid of them. Additionally, another word that presents itself in the scripture this morning is the word possessed. And before we consider the horror movie that has us checking under the beds, according to the same dictionary source, the meaning to be possessed is to be influenced or controlled by something. I read that again, and I considered that I can get on board with this meaning too. We can understand what it is to be influenced or controlled by something. All of the discussions around Bell Let's Talk this week, I was immediately taken to the images, conversations, and stories shared from those struggling with mental health challenges, including those physically ailing from disease, diagnosis, loneliness, self-destructive behavior, eating disorders, addiction, a sense of abandonment, abuse, fear, and anxiety. And we can't name the worn souls who are in need of so much healing and redemption without considering the heaviness carried by all the caregivers, the ones who hold the hand of the ailing at bedside, or simply the ones who cheer on and attempt to uplift those struggling every day. Now, from what I found most intriguing, or rather steeped in, in, in irony, is what took place back in the waters of the Jordan River 
at Jesus' baptism. If you can recall from my recent sermon from earlier verses of the book of Mark, the scripture read, just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. So, do we get the picture? Jesus has just been filled with the Holy Spirit. And the definition of possessed is to be influenced or controlled by something. So, Jesus has been possessed by the Spirit of God, a pure spirit. So, the question. What's influencing or controlling you these days? What possesses you? What influences or controls you that isn't the pure Holy Spirit, but an unclean spirit? Because if it's not the Holy Spirit, what is it? Today's scripture reveals in the book of Mark Jesus' very first public act where he performs a miracle. And what does Jesus do? Jesus responds to a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit who cries out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I'm reminded of a firefighter who storms into a burning building passing all those trying to flee in order to get to the one in trouble. This is our Jesus, filled with the pure Holy Spirit, facing off against an impure, destructive spirit and says, no way, and drives it out, kicks it to the curb in front of everyone to see. Jesus crosses into those spaces and places where no one else is willing to go. Is this not what Jesus' ministry is all about? The impure spirit doesn't just show up on our doorstep as an uninvited guest. <laughs> we often open the door, invite them in to sit down and put their feet up. Osvaldo Vene a commentator of scripture, speaks of this. Unclean spirits, which are those who possess us as a community, as a nation, as members of the human race, they are intent on destroying us, and we need to cast them out. How? First, we have to name them. Naming the demons or unclean spirits, is a way to recognize that they exist. We start with the big one, unbelief. Losing one's faith in God, in life as a sacred force, and in our fellow human beings. It is a feeling that nothing can be done to solve our problems. Then, Springing from that one comes others in fearful company, homophobia, racism, sexism, classism, religious and ideological intolerance, violence at home and at school, poverty, militarism, terrorism, war, greed, extreme individualism, globalization, out of control capitalism, media infused fear that leads to paranoia and governmental manipulation of information, to name a few. I so appreciated last week's meditation shared by the worship team, specifically reminding us about our words. The words of the Lord's Prayer, do we hear them? Do we understand them or do we move through them simply as a memorized habit? Let's consider the words of our creed. Do we do the same with it? 
I'm talking, we believe in God who works in us and others by the Spirit. What Spirit is working within you right now? Is it one that is receptive to Jesus, taking up residence within you, and has allowed Jesus to kick that impure spirit packing? Or is it the spirit within you breaking down, muddying your clarity with a weight of anger, fear, doubt, hate, envy, pain, suffering, resentment? What spirit is working within you? And when we consider our Trinity Capriol mission statement, we are told that we are redeemed people. And we are, as Jesus' Easter people, the one crucified and risen. So when in our mission statement, when we say that we are living and growing in the spirit of Jesus, do our actions and the spirit that resides within us reflect the spirit of Jesus? You know the one, the one of God that comes down of a torn heaven and makes home in Jesus the one we can bask in and also find a home in when we cry out like the impure spirit cried out that day in the synagogue. We are reminded of what the scripture says again, in that the impure, impure spirit didn't simply cry out, but, he, but asked a question. And it said, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? The question for us is to ask Jesus. Jesus, what do you want with me? And Jesus' reply is simple. And it was the answer to the unclean spirit as well, which is everything. Jesus wants everything. Jesus, like the one going back into the burning building as all the others are rushing out, wants everything, all of us. And regardless of the broken and unclean spirit that resides within us, scripture is giving us teachings that remind us of an unfailing love. And Jesus models for us tools that we can use in our daily life to pray, to give, to see, and care for the other. Jesus reminds us again and again that the kingdom of heaven is for all of us, right here and right now. So God's redeemed and grace-soaked people, let the Spirit of God within you go out and do and serve living out our creed and mission in this world. Amen. And as we move into our prayers for the people, I, um, I invite you to uh, watch this video of prayer. Thanks be to God. O oh, Divine Healer, we confess that sometimes we yearn for you to wave a magic wand on our wounded lives, to remove our pain, illness, and suffering. We hear the gospel story of the one seeking healing from Jesus and assume you will perform a similar miracle for all of us if we just pray hard enough, and we do pray. 
open our eyes to recognize the teachings and tools you have given us with which to seek healing. In the midst of our afflictions and diseases, you whisper to us that wholeness requires self-care and rest. You nudge us toward caregivers who can support and advise us. You breathe into us energy to move and stretch and reach toward health. You place in us an urgency to seek justice so that all may enjoy adequate health, care. Renew our spirits in the midst of our diseases and afflicting spirits. Transform us, O Holy One, for the health of your creation. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God. Gosh, we're a broken bunch. Help to renew our spirits. God, we ask for a healing balm. For all that uh, pains us and gets in our way of seeing you. God, we pray for this world, for all of the ill and of this uh, incredible pandemic that blankets and chokes and takes people's breath. God, we pray for vaccines to come quickly. We pray for those who need it most. God, that their arms are found quickly. We pray for those who are struggling at this moment. Those who we know, those who we don't, who are in care, who are without family, who are set apart. God, would you be their peace? God, we are so grateful for the healthcare workers who hold the hands and cry the tears. And God, we are so thankful for all those who continue to work through this pandemic, who bring us what we need, who day in and day out, do what is necessary. God, please be with us in our consciousness as we make decisions to do what we are required to do, to stay in place, to stay safe. Help us to make good decisions. God, we, we pray for our community of faith. We pray for, for Carol, who's recovering after surgery. We pray for the St. Amour family. God, would you wrap your loving arms around them? We pray for Cyrus his continued healing for Bob. And God, we pray for, for Betty. We pray for Betty, who, whose son awaits test results. God, would you, would you break in and would you hold Betty and Bob in their waiting and in their fear? God, do what you do. 
and have Betty feel this community of faith uh, wrap their arms around, around her. God, we bring all that is uh, weighing heavily on us now. You know the words before they're on our tongue. We lift them up to you. Now we join in uh, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into this world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. Amen.